Hey, 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 hey. Good morning. It's Cooler Talk with Rhonda and Cynthia. We're here. You never know what we're going to talk about here around the cooler, but we did have a topic prepared for you today. Um, yeah. And uh, we're, we're calling it comparitis. And yes. Where you compare yourself to other people. Yes. Um, and uh, I'll th- I will tell you that research confirms that doing this produces the following results. I, well, all I have to do is jump in real quick and say, I don't need research to confirm this because I have tripped myself up so many times throughout my life. I can even remember all sorts of like moments where I would get so bogged down comparing myself and my performance to my classmates, my um, colleagues Mm -hmm. and others. And then, you know, I don't, I don't, I feel very insecure. I don't really become a good contributor to the things that we're doing. And it really blows when you're a solo practice and you're really trying to like, just Mm -hmm. make a name for yourself on your own. So. Yeah. And when we compare ourselves to other people, we create feelings of envy. We, uh, it, it actually lowers our self-confidence. Yep. Uh, depression can occur because we're not meeting up to what we think others' expectations are because they're mm-hmm. doing so great. And mm-hmm. the ability um, to trust others. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, even downward comparisons such as uh, looking at someone that's in a less fortunate situation than you has a negative effect. It's all negative, negative, negative. It Um, is. And we need to know that other so-called perfection uh, is really an illusion. It is. (laughs) What they show publicly may not be all the truth. What was Um, that? it's, It's the only truth that they want you to see. Yeah. Um, it's not the whole truth because in life, things do happen behind the scenes mm-hmm. without yeah. a doubt. And we don't That's... know that about other people. We jump to conclusions and make judgments based on our personal perceptions, which uh, have nothing to do with knowledge about the others that we're comparing ourselves to. So, you know, hey, you know what? Life life isn't fair. It really isn't in that that um, the differences we see often come from an uneven playing field. Uh, and hard work isn't always enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are born with advantages that we don't have. Things have the Symmet- like, for example, someone might have a symmetrical face or a pretty appearance that we don't have. Well, you know, come on. If you weren't born with it, you weren't born with it. But you have a lot of other attributes, uh, like a fast metabolism. Well, not all of us were born with wealthy parents and, um, and exceptional social connections. So, you know, that's just to name a few. The list can go on and on and on. So are we really being realistic when we're comparing ourselves to others? Yeah, well, I I am going to blurt in and say no, not at all. And I also actually, I have to say, my mindset um, has shifted since um, my youth um, where I actually don't even let's say, take the position where I judge life per se. So where I don't say whether life is fair or unfair. Everybody has experiences and those experiences, they they can be the exact same experience, but they can have a completely different impact on each individual. And, you know, I was born, I was born a brown skinned person in a a white world. (laughs) I grew up in a place where there are tensions based on that. But I I have shifted my, um, I have shifted my perspective on life, where I am not going to basically 
engage or disempower myself because mm. my appearance is different from um, mm. many of the people that I interact with, you know, mm. on a daily basis, but also throughout my life. Um, and it does require, it does require a lot of going within. Um, it mm. does require looking at what you see and realizing that there is more beyond the lens, like you were saying, mm -hmm. like the Instagram effect where you see people and their beautifully staged images. And then, and you say, well, why is it my life imaged in that way? And it's like, well, you're not seeing what's happening outside of that lens. You're seeing right a captured moment that that person wants to show. And we all, we all show an image. Um, yeah, you they know, could have been arguing for 25 minutes before that final shot was taken. We don't yeah. know that, but it was yeah. a good shot. <laughs> it was a great shot. And, you know, it was, and, and those are the images. I mean, we're all doing it all the time. Yeah. We're all, you know, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it is, reality per se yeah. um so i i really i think what i would like to say is that life life is giving us all experiences and it's really mm -hmm. a matter of how we want to um how we want to sort of like own those experiences do we want to be an agent of our lives or do we want to be you know victims and have life happen to us exactly. and i think that's what like the person who's suffering from compare itis has is they are, you know, stuck in the place where they're saying like, why don't I have that? You know, why, why is my life not like that? And it's like, is that really well, that person's life? Maybe, or is that right. Maybe you need to take the focus off of them, turn it back into yourself and ask yourself, what do uh -huh. you want? Mm -hmm. judge your life based on other people's accomplishments mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. because that create your own accomplishments yeah and you know what celebrate them when they happen acknowledge yeah. them when they happen you know i think yeah. we have gotten into a place where our lives are happening so quickly and the images of other people's lives are coming to us at mm -hmm. such a, an intense pace and you know we're exposed to them at all times mm -hmm. i think though that we can let ourselves off the hook and say okay you know what let me let me just acknowledge the fact that like i don't know that i actually got to take a week's vacation a couple weeks ago i mean now it feels right. like an eternity ago but that's huge yeah people you know 300 years ago didn't ever have vacations. I mean, it was like an mm -hmm. unheard of concept to like most people to take mm -hmm. a vacation, whether it was one day or, you know, a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. you know, we've come a long way. Enjoy, enjoy the, the little things and you'll mm -hmm. see that like more and more of those little things are, are coming at you all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, focus on that self-improvement instead of one-upmanship. Keeping yes. up with the Joneses can be very, very expensive. And if it's not in your budget, you're hurting yourself. Yes, yes. And I heard this expression for the first time about four years ago, maybe five years ago, maybe seven years ago. It was at mid 2015 ish Oh my God, does it ever. It was 2015-ish. I was just sort of at that, like right before things were starting to pick up with my um, freelance writing business. And I had been networking with um, some entrepreneurs. They weren't writers. And she once said to me, a rising tide lifts all ships. And I have to say that was like, I think that was around the time where I finally realized like I can celebrate other people's successes with them rather mm -hmm. than compare myself to their success and say, why haven't I yet mm -hmm. achieved this? And when I realized that like when we come together and we can really sort of like share with each other and appreciate each other's contributions, see each other's success, that it really is such that a rising tide lifts all ships, no matter where mm -hmm. you are, you know. Um, because you can end up helping each other in one way yes. or another. 
Yes. And my yeah. growth was really exponential around that time. And she was a very successful, you know, solo, um, creative freelancer. Mm -hmm. um, and she wasn't a writer. And we had a lot of talks. She also had some like group coaching. Mm -hmm. And she said that to me and it like stuck with me. And I realized, yeah, I should actually be spending my time celebrating other people's successes when they have them with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really sort of carving out that time for that. And I realized people were starting to do that with me, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I think it really did kind of help build that momentum that took place and which also helped with, I think, my outward presence with my new clients mm -hmm. at that time. Sure. Oh. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. So comparitis, totally debilitating totally debilitating <laughs> and it happens in yeah. all environments all industries everything so and you know. if you're not careful by comparing yourself in a way that's putting your either putting yourself down or falsely building yourself up yeah. and it's got to take a self-esteem toll. toll somewhere it takes a self-esteem toll and if you're so worried about what everybody else is doing, mm -hmm. how can you be creative and open-minded? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you're just copying the next guy and copying the next guy. And you're, you're not really like hearing what it is that, um, what it is that you do and the value that you really bring, because even though, even though when you work with your peers and they happen to be in the same business, you never offer the same thing. You know, I mean, you could, you could both be in an affiliate marketing business. You could both be selling the same product, but your value to your customers is always different and you're always targeting different customers. Your audience is always different. Um, and there is no need for that level of, comparison that competition all of that is debilitating to your forward momentum it is debilitating and you know money is in abundance everywhere there's uh there's no uh it, it really is everywhere mm -hmm. <coughs> and um to think in a limited uh mindset your whole it, it all boils down to you're holding yourself back yes this comparing and this uh, being, you know, then jealousy occurs because mm -hmm. they're doing so well and I'm not, and mm -hmm. I'm sick of hearing about their success because mm -hmm. I'm failing, mm -hmm. in, you know, well, wait a minute, you know, mm -hmm. you're making surface comparisons mm -hmm. and you need to know, you know, if it bothers you that much, if you really mm -hmm. want to improve your life, ask them, what what did you have to do behind the scenes yeah. to get to where you are today? There are many, especially for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. there are many sacrifices that mm -hmm. had to be made. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be in financial, spiritual, mental, um, uh, wanting to give up. Yeah. And, um, you know, having to have the persistence and the drive to just keep on trying. I'm going to find my mm -hmm. niche, uh, mm -hmm. but you're just going to have to keep experimenting until it happens. And use and those other people as, as, um, as tools, as guidelines, as uh, examples. Okay, uh, I need to step this up a little bit more mm -hmm. or step that back. That worked for them. Let me try it. Well, it didn't work for me. I'll try something different. Yeah. Um, so our successful friends are, they want to help other people. Yes, they do. They, yes, they do. Yeah, they really do want to help other people. Mm -hmm. uh, but the ones that, you know, it's all me, 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 me. You don't really want to be around those people because mm -hmm. they're the energy vampires. Mm -hmm. So working with this, or I shouldn't even say working, sort of coaching together. We had sort of a yeah. coaching relationship with this yeah. artist person, you know, and when she said that a rising tide lifts all ships, um, I, like I said, 
sort of a, a mental shift occurred where I stopped comparing myself to other people. Mm. And I remember around that time, there was also this thing that I started to say, um, and I don't know if it came directly from her or if it was just like the general vibe I was transitioning into, right. but I, I started to say like, I don't have competition. I just have inspiration. And when I started to look at, you know, my competition and all of the other people who, you know, write in English in this environment and, you know, provide these kinds of services, when I started to see them as inspiration, they actually also were open to me approaching them and asking mm -hmm. them about their business, how did they get started, or how did they solve this problem, or, you know, so I started, I started to feel comfortable approaching them because I went there with an open heart. I didn't go there That's, with any, yes. with any exactly. you know, sort of thoughts about like, well, maybe I can get a piece of her pie and maybe I can penetrate her market. And there are a lot of women. It's in not the a, yeah, it's not a competition. It's not. It's, it's in, a, in the big picture of things, if you look at it from a reality perspective and yes. not an ego perspective, yes. it's not a competition. That's We're right. all here to help each other. We just have to find the people we resonate the most with. Yeah. To, uh, and there is to complement each other. Yes. Yeah. There's more yeah. than enough of everything on this planet for us to grow and like be our to, to fulfill our fullest potential and you know and then when you start to when you stop comparing because comparing is really a mindset where you say there's a limited amount mm -hmm. someone else is getting some that I, and if someone else gets some then i didn't get any right and that's pretty much i i swear that's a subconscious thought that's deprivation, you know, and yes, it's like, yes, that's, that is not how the universe operates. There's, there's always been more than enough air for us to breathe. There's and always been enough water for us to mm. enjoy. There's enough. Although things are getting a little tight out in Arizona with the water. <laughs> with the water. There's enough. So I'm having oh, second yeah. thoughts about, uh, about, <laughs> wanting to move out there i love the climate but you know that that's a concern that's not a plentiful resource out there because they've had so many droughts yeah yeah uh, the desert living so um but that's another story for another yeah. time but the world there is abundance in the world and the universe does want us to have that abundance yeah and we're holding ourselves back mm -hmm. We are and holding compare. ourselves back when we compare ourselves to someone else. That it is, is different, that someone else is in a different body. They're in a different uh, uh, soul, if you will. They're in a different existence. Mm -hmm. So stop comparing mm -hmm. um, and uh, and start complimenting and be happy for them. Be yeah. happy for their success and learn yeah. and grow from them. You know, like what was your worst challenge mm -hmm. as you were working your way up? Mm -hmm. And like, and and just because somebody's born into wealth mm -hmm. financially does not mean they don't have their own challenges. That's right. You know, families are families. Yep. And <laughs> there's always challenges involved with that. And each person is, you know, there's conflicts mm -hmm. uh, and they learn conflict resolution and, and just learn to do things in a, in sort of a different way. Um, maybe not, might not have to, uh, struggle, but I know some people of wealth that have had, um, there have been, um, like market challenges yeah, and, uh, like, for example, one of them is in a, a form of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And years ago, all of a sudden, this type of business started sh getting shipped over to China and these okay. other countries. And the quality went down. Mm -hmm. But everybody was buying based on price, price, price. Yeah. But things do come full circle mm -hmm. because quality is not 
worth the sacrifice. Um, yep. I have a, a relative that used to, why does Rhonda always have to have the best of everything? Well, Rhonda focuses on the quality first. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just throw my money away. I want to buy something. If I'm going to buy something, I want to buy something that's going to last. Yep. And uh, I don't want to keep replacing and replenishing. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. we, we do that enough just with food, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so like the cars I buy are designed to la last a very yes. long time. Time. It's been it's finan financially prudent to do that, right? And uh, and my mom, my mom was the queen of, of finding finding bargains, and so uh, who doesn't like a good bargain anyway? Especially if it has quality associated with it. Mm -hmm. It's and it's fun. Yeah, it's fun to find those things. So. You know, everything's different. Like where I live, I knew that this community was a, a go-to community to buy 25 mm -hmm. years ago. And I knew from my research and from word of mouth that uh, I would, uh, that, that this would be the, the right place to invest. Right. And it's paying off. It's paid off. Like the value mm -hmm. of my home and just in 25 years has has uh, gone up more than double. It's in probably uh, 75, uh, 100, I would say 175%. Mm -hmm. And it's and it, still it's moderately really, priced around here. So Yeah. It's really about understanding yourself and the kind of experiences mm -hmm. that you want to have in your life and, and the things that you value in your life. Yes. Um, that that coach person that I used to talk with very regularly in those days, um, you know, she also was married to a husband who was also an entrepreneur and they had kind of a joint business that they were starting to launch. Um, they were kind of closing down one thing. And one of the reasons why they were shutting that down was because um, her husband was very much like a go-getter. He was a very sort of like action-oriented individual and, you know, a lot of go, go, go. And she was, start and they had just gotten married around that time. And she had started to say like, you know, this, this kind of drive is not working with her mojo. And so mm -hmm. they had a heart to heart and they decided, you know what, I mean, for him, like shooting for a million, keeping that million, driving for that million, that was fine. And they had, they had reached it, but mm -hmm. she was like, I just can't keep up with this pace. It's giving me a lot of unnecessary stress. So they said, okay, we're going to reduce our need for like our annual revenue need to what we think is enough for both of us to feel like we are, you know, moving forward being creative, but still like that doesn't necessarily take that kind of toll. And he revealed later that after they had ratcheted down that number, he was focusing a lot less on what others in his, his area was more sales oriented, sales and advertising oriented, that he was focusing a lot less on what others in that industry were doing. And he was focusing a lot more on like being creative, thinking out of the box. And he had started to carve like a really niche area for himself. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I love the fact that I have so much more time because I feel like I'm not spending as much time sort of seeing what other people are doing and trying to do what they're doing. So he was like, I, he finally realized I get to do what I really want to do. I don't have to keep up with the Joneses, like you were saying. So, and that, and it pulls you in too many directions too. Yes. And yes. It's hard to enjoy life when uh, when you're when not living you're yours. operating at that level. Yeah, yeah. And you're not that, living your life. And and for each person it's different, but look at yeah. them, how they w were able to work that out. And yeah. uh, then he found his real talent and real yeah. name and where yeah. he enjoyed being and where he could focus Yeah, and uh, ended up uh, all the vibration levels that went up. Yeah. And more, actually, more like positive. I yeah, mm -hmm. more positive in all respects. So, 
I still know them. It's and positive about comparison, comparing yourself to other. I mean, yeah. if you pay attention to how you physically feel when you compare yes. with someone else to other, it's a downer. It is a downer, for sure. It is a downer. You're not, you're not being you. You're not being authentic to yourself. You're, you're, you're trying to live somebody else's life. Um, and, and that's, that's not how it works. I mean, just on a, a much more basic level, not including money, because I know that like money is one of those topics that can get people's um, emotions a little jumbled well, up. We need it for to, to exchange goods and services. If we look at it at its basic purpose, is really to exchange goods and purposes. So yes. Some it's people see make, it as power and control, but it's... Uh, it's not there to make you happier. It's not there to make your life better. That's not a, it at all. You know, that's not the purpose of money. Um, and on another note, I, when I was running the restaurant with my husband, um, you know, at, about a year in, I was exhausted. I went to my husband... Yeah my boyfriend at the time. And I was just like, I just, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I like broke down and cried. And he's like, well, can I just say something to you? And I was like, bye, love. It was a mess. And, um, <laughs> and he's like, you know, I know I have a lot of energy. I only need to sleep five hours a night. I know you need to sleep like six to eight hours a night, more like on the eight hour side. Yeah. He's like, all I see is you trying to keep up with my pace, yeah. trying to keep up with me. He's like, you don't have to do that. Like, that's not what we agreed when we set up this restaurant. Like, cut yourself some slack. You're not the chef here anyway. This is just how I roll. I can't help myself. But you don't have to do what I do. You don't have to do the hours I do. And it was like, I was so relieved. So much <laughs> was pressure that took off so much pressure. Yes. And, and the problem was I was comparing myself to him. Like if he's doing all this work, I need to, at the very least, like do the same kind of work and put out the same kind of energy. And that's just not how I roll. Like if I just don't have, if that's not your natural level of energy, it's exhausting. I don't have that physical fitness. I don't, you know, I, I was also learning on the job. I mean, I had never run a restaurant before. This was his like, seventh or eighth restaurant you know like yeah and and i was just trying to like keep i was trying to keep up with him you know mm -hmm. which is a form of comparison and and the point was that i wasn't living my life and you know that's that's how comparing will drag you and your business down like Rhonda yeah. and i cannot emphasize this enough let that com compare itis go mm -hmm. Get your mm. vaccination against compare itis. <laughs> yeah, focus, focus on yourself and yeah, and just yeah, and uh, and enjoy, enjoy what you do. Yes, um, and finding people that have a similar drive, it comes naturally. Yes. Yeah, not competition. Not comparing it will stifle you. It will stop your creativity and uh, your motivation. It stops. It it almost eliminates it because mm -hmm. you're going to sit around wallowing over comparing yourself to them instead of focusing on, hey, here these are my talents. Mm -hmm. What do I want to do with them? Right. Yeah. And celebrating when you are like exercising your talents. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And it is now 10 o'clock. Is the you, would you like to summarize what we talked about today? Um, well, I think you had mentioned a few things. Um, you had mentioned a few things at the beginning about compare itis and how it is a drag on your confidence and self-esteem. I think those were a few points that you made about what are like why compare-itis is a bad illness to have. Mm -hmm. And 
how to make the shift out of compare-itis is remember, it's not competition, it's inspiration. A rising tide lifts all ships. Celebrate all of the little wins. There are lots of them in every day. Yes, there are. And thank you for that summary, Cynthia. And that's it for Cooler Talk this week. We'll see you next week. And feel free to make any comments about what we talked about today. We always enjoy hearing your comments. And we love it when you follow us, too. Have a wonderful week. day and a wonderful week. Ciao for now. Ciao for now. <laughs>